Hello everyone! This video would focus on hyperbola and this is the second part. In this part, the center of the hyperbola is located at HK. In this part as well, we are going to have examples where we change the general form of a hyperbola to its equivalent graphing or vertex form. Before we go over this example that we have right here, let's have a review on the basic information about hyperbola. There are two cases of hyperbola with center at HK. Now let's go over the first case. The first case is the horizontal hyperbola, and this is its formula. Now please notice that we can form a horizontal hyperbola if the x part of the equation is positive, the one that I put inside the square. Let us locate the center of this hyperbola. Point C is the center of the hyperbola, and the uh, coordinate for the center of horizontal hyperbola is HK. Now let's locate the vertex of the hyperbola. These are the two vertices of the hyperbola, and the um, coordinate for these ver two vertices would be H plus A comma K. Now, we remember that the distance from the center to the vertex is A. We also have co-vertices, and we're going to label the co-vertices in this picture. The distance from the co-vertices to the center, or the distance from one co-vertex to the center, is B. The coordinate of the co-vertices is h, comma, k plus b. The next part of this horizontal hyperbola are the asymptotes. In order that we can easily uh, draw the asymptote, we are going to draw a rectangle. This rectangle should cover these four points, the two vertices and the two co-vertices. The asymptotes in a horizontal hyperbola passes through the corners of the rectangle passing through the center. The equation of these two asymptotes would be y equals plus minus b over a quantity x minus h plus k. We also have the focus. The coordinates of these two foci would be h plus c comma k. Now let's move on to the second case. This graph illustrates the second case of hyperbola, which is the vertical hyperbola, and this is its formula. Now please remember that in this case, the y part of the equation is the positive part. So that's what that's very important because this will tell us that the Hyperbola is a vertical hyperbola. The one that I squared is the positive part of the hyperbola, which is the y part. Now let's locate the center of this hyperbola. This is the center C of the hyperbola. Now let's draw the two vertices of this hyperbola. These are the two vertices of this hyperbola. Now we remember that the distance from the center to the vertex is A. This tells us that the coordinate for the two vertices of this vertical hyperbola is H comma K plus A. We also have two co-vertices for vertical hyperbola. These are the two co-vertices of a vertical hyperbola, and the distance from the center to the co-vertex is B. And the coordinate of the two co-vertices would be H plus minus B comma K. This vertical hyperbola has two asymptotes. In order that we can easily sketch the asymptotes, we are going to draw a rectangle that passes through the two vertices and the two co-vertices. The two asymptotes for vertical hyperbola passes through the corners of this rectangle passing through the center.
The equation of these two asymptotes for vertical hyperbola is y equals plus minus a over b quantity x minus h plus k. Now we also have two foci for this vertical hyperbola. The two points labeled f are the two foci of the hyperbola and the coordinate of the two foci would be h comma k plus c. These are the two cases for hyperbola. The first case is the horizontal hyperbola, while the second case is the vertical hyperbola. Okay, going back to the example that we have right here, we are going to determine the case for this hyperbola. Now, please notice that the positive squared variable is the x. So we have a positive 9x squared. This tells us that this is an example of a horizontal hyperbola. So I'm going to go ahead and write that down here. Now, our next task is to determine the center, the foci, the vertices, the co-vertices, and the asymptotes. Before we can do that, we are. I'm just going to go ahead and rewrite this equation down here. The first step that we're going to do is to add 36 to both sides. Now, what we do next is to group together all the those with variable x, those that have squared x's and those that have x. So in this case right here, we're going to group together the 9x squared and the 36x. And at the same time, we're going to group together all the y's. So that would be um, 4y squared and negative 24y. So I'm just going to go ahead and show that work right here. Okay, so what happens here is that if I distribute the negative here, negative times, um, that's pretty much like negative 1. So negative times 4y squared would be negative 4y squared. Negative times positive 24y would be positive 24y. So I group together all the ones with x's on them and all the y's with y's. The next thing that we're going to do is to factor out each of the ones inside the parentheses. The common factor of the first group here is 9, and the common factor of the second group for y's here is 4. So the equation would come out. So what I did here was I factored out the 9 and 4. So 9 times x squared is 9x squared. 9 times 4x is positive 36x, and the negative 4 times y squared is negative 4y squared, and the negative 4 times 6y is negative 24y. So what are we going to do next is we will complete the squares. We can do this by making this side of the equation into a perfect square trinomial. We can do that by adding blanks to it. So this is how it's going to look like. So what I did was I added blanks to the ones inside the parentheses and I added blanks also to the ones inside the parentheses. And then since I added two blanks here, I'm going to add two blanks also on the other side of the equation to make them even. Now what we do is to determine what value or what number do we write into the blank. So first, we, we remember that whatever is the second term here that's positive 4, we always divide it by 2. So this comes out positive 4 divided by 2 is 2. And then after that, whatever the answer is, we're going to square it. So that would be 2 squared. That gives us 4. So we square it every time. This 4 is the one that we put into the first blank. So this is 4 right here. Now, to determine what to write on the first blank as well on the left side, of, I mean, on the right side of the equation, we are going to multiply 9 times 4, which is 36. So I'm going to go ahead and write 36 here. Now we're going to do the same thing on the second parentheses or the second group here. So what are we going to do is, again, we use the second term. That's a 6. And so I'm going to always remember, divide it by 2. So 6 divided by 2 is 3. And whatever the answer is, that's 3, we square it. And that is equal to 9. And that's the number that we put in here. So that would be 9 on this blank. Now, we are going to um, add the same thing on the other side. But we have a negative 4 times 9 is negative 36. That means we write negative 36 on the other blank. 
If you notice, this one's inside the parentheses is already a perfect square trinomial. So we can go ahead and rewrite this as nine, the one um, that's outside, so that's nine. Since this is a perfect square trinomial, we're gonna write x first. Whatever is this number, when you divided it, we are going to pair it up with the x. So that would be x plus two squared, and that is first part, and then this is minus, then we also have, um, on this side, we have four, and then this is also a perfect square trinomial, so that's gonna be y, whatever is this number that we got here, that's the one that we pair up to y, so that would be y plus three, and then square it, and that this is equal to, these two gets crossed out, that's actually equal to 36. We want the right side equal to one, so then we go ahead and divide both sides by 36. Now please notice that we can reduce this to its lowest term. There's one nine in nine, and there are four nines in 36. And there's one four in four, and there's like nine fours in 36. So that we can go ahead and rewrite this equation as And this is the vertex form of this general form of hyperbola that we have up there. Now, please notice that our center is HK, so that would be negative 2. So I'm going to write here negative 2, and then negative 3. So this, uh, that would be the center of the hyperbola. So we're going to go ahead and plot that down here. So that's negative 2, and then negative three. So this is going to go all the way here. So this is our center. Again, please notice that the x part of this equation is the positive. So that means this is an example of a horizontal hyperbola. So this means that our a is four. So that's a squared is equal to four. So then we go ahead and solve for a. Our a then is equal to plus minus two. Well, the nine here is our b squared. So that's b squared is equal to nine. So, uh, we square it both sides. b is plus minus three. So we go ahead and sketch the two vertices. So the two vertices would come from the a. So the two vertices are located two places from the center. So it's gonna, we're gonna count two places to the left and two places to the right. And these are the coordinates of the two vertices. Now we remember that the B is the distance from the center to the co-vertices. So I'm gonna go ahead and plot the two co-vertices. From here, we can go ahead and draw the rectangle. The next thing that we do is to draw the two asymptotes passing through the corners of the rectangle through the center. To find the equation of these asymptotes, we're gonna find the um, slope first. So that would be one, two, three. So we start with this equation right here. So that's one, two, three, and then one, two. So that would be y equals 3 over 2, and then that would be x minus h, which is negative 2. So x minus negative 2 is a positive 2, and then minus 3, which is the k. So this is the equation for this um, asymptote. Well, the equation of the other asymptote is a negative slope. It's pretty much the same thing, but the slope is negative. From here, we can sketch the hyperbola. The next part is to determine the focus. Now, we remember that the focus is C distance from the center. And so we can go ahead and solve for C using the equation C squared equals A squared plus B squared. So I'm going to go ahead and show that work down here. Okay, this tells us that our focus is located 3.61 to the left and 3.61 to the right of the center. So this is where it's going to be located. Now we remember that the coordinate of the two foci for horizontal hyperbola is 
h plus minus c comma k. So I'm going to go ahead and write that um, coordinate up here. So again, that's h. Our h here is negative 2. And then the first one would be a plus um, c. Our c is square root of 13. So plus square root of 13 comma k, which is negative 3. And then the other coordinate would be negative 2 minus square root of 13 comma negative 3. So this is the graph of this general form that we have right here and for this vertex form or graphing form that we have down here. Now let's move on to the next example. Before we go over this example, I'm going to go ahead and rewrite this equation down here. Now please notice that in this example we have right here, our 25y squared is the positive part of the equation. This tells us that this is an example of a vertical hyperbola. So I'm going to go ahead and write it down here. So what are we going to do next is we're going to add 191 to both sides. Now what we do next is we are going to group together all those y's inside the parentheses and all those x inside the parentheses. What we do next is we are going to factor out 25 and factor out 16. So this is how the equation is going to look like. What are we going to do next is we will change this part of the equation with the parentheses into a perfect square trinomial by adding um, blanks to each of these two parentheses and two blanks also on the other side across. So this is how the equation is going to look like. Now what we do next is to fill in this blank. In order that we can fill this blank in, we're going to take, we're going to divide this middle term, this 6, and this negative 2, we divide it by 2. And then whatever the answer is, we're going to square it. And whatever the answer, when we square it, that's the one that we put inside the blank. And so this is how it's going to look like. Now, what we put across would be this. We're going to multiply 25 times 9 is 225, and that's the one that we write here, so 225, and then we're going to multiply negative 16, and we put in the 1 here, so negative 16 times 1 is negative 16. So we go ahead and see that this is already a perfect square trinomial, so the equation would come out that's going to be 25, and then we get a y, this one is going to pair up with a y, so this comes out y plus 3, squared and then that's a minus we got a 16 and this is a perfect square the one that we write with the x so that's the x right there we pair it up with this number negative one so this becomes a minus one so x minus one squared is equal to now if we add all of these this will equal to 400 what we do next is we are going to divide 400 to both sides of the equation and we simplify. Now please notice that whichever gets the positive part of the equation will have an a squared. This tells us that our 16 is the a squared and 25 is the b squared. So we're going to solve for a and b. From here, we can see that our, ver our, our center for this hyperbola is on positive 1 and negative 3. So I'm going to go ahead and plot that dot right here. The next thing that we do is to plot the vertices. We remember that the A takes the distance from the center to the vertex. So we count 4 up and we count 4 down since this is a vertical hyperbola. So that would be 1, 2, 3, 4. So it's going to sit right here. And then we count 4 down, 1, 2, 3, 4. And these are the two vertices of the um, hyperbola. And these are their coordinates. Now we remember that the co-vertices of the hyperbola is 5 spaces to the left and five spaces to the right. So I'm going to go ahead and plot these two co-vertices and determine its coordinate. Now let's draw the rectangle. From here, we can draw the two asymptotes. 
and these are the equation of the two asymptotes. So that would be y equals, we get the slope, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So that would be 4 over 5. That's going to be x minus h, which is negative 1. And then plus k, that's a negative 3. And the equation of the other asymptote is exactly the same thing here, but its slope is negative. So I'm just going to go ahead and write that down here. And we can go ahead and sketch the hyperbola. Now let's determine the two foci. So the foci is, or the one of the two foci would be located C distance from the center. And we can solve for that C distance using the equation C squared equals A squared plus B squared. I'm going to go ahead and show the work down here. So uh, the two foci are located 6.4 units from the center. So I'm going to go ahead and write it down here. The coordinates of the two foci for a vertical hyperbola would be h. So we write the h, that's um, 1. And then that's going to be k, negative 3, plus minus C, so that's going to be a plus square root of 41, and the other one would be 1 comma negative 3 minus square root of 41. So this is the graph of this general equation that we have right here, and for this vertex form that we have down here. That's it. If you found this video helpful, consider subscribing and hitting that like button for more math videos. See ya!